We are going to do something different today. I'm going to take off my normal nice gloves and assign a Pokemon to each state alphabetically in a very insulting manner. Like anyone could say, oh, Minnesota, you get Snover because you just have so many beautiful trees that frequently get buried in your beautiful snowfall. How nice! <laughs> but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find out what each state statistically ranks the worst in, slap on the rude stereotypes the rest of the nation gives them, and apply a Pokemon that way. Basically, we're just going to have a fun time making Americans mad. For instance, take Alabama. It would be way too easy to give Alabama Mousehold the white inbred family of mice with mouths way bigger than their brains. So I won't be doing that. Instead, Alabama, you get Tandem Mouse because most of your children are fleeing the state for a better life. Which thankfully, isn't too difficult for them because you are consistently ranked the worst possible state to live in once you average out every metric. But that's not to say you don't excel at a variety of activities. For instance, you have the highest rate of child smokers, and are among the highest for child abuse, spreading STDs, teen pregnancies, teaching Bible stories instead of school at all, and stroke. It's fun for the whole family. Except the kids. Alaska, realistically, I could give you bear tick, and it'd be pretty fitting. I mean, polar bears live there, and it's cold enough that your breath freezes to your face, and bear tick is so gosh darn pinheaded that you'd think it could accurately portray just how dim witted your people are, specifically the ones who chose to live there for any reason other than the fishing and oil industries. I mean, you have near permanent day or nights, depending on the time of year. Giant bears, moose that are deadlier than the bears, and the most violent human criminals and the most serial killers per capita. And worse still, hour long drives just to get out of your rundown shamble of a neighborhood. Yeah, choosing to live in Alaska is like willingly choosing a mono ice type Pokemon for your attempt at a competitive team. You need to take a good long look at yourself, Alaska, before the final brain cells freeze over. So you get Cryogonal, a brainless, mirror like snowflake, and a heartless, cold hard killer who will just as mindlessly take a life as it will take the money you have to pay your citizens to stay there. All the while, still claiming to hate socialism. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Arizona is just an affront to God. And I don't just mean because the air is hot enough to literally cook your organs while you wait to catch the bus. I mean, once you're on that rocky desert bus, driving this 190 mile stretch of land, you'll have to change your watch eight times. This bureaucratic burnt baloney means it's easier to tell the time by tracking the position of the sun, so you get Sol Rock one of the few Pokemon who could actually survive the dry heat and all of your venomous animals that you have the most of. It also really happens to like the confusion attack, aptly reflecting how your students feel because your state is ranked as the worst one for teachers to work and live in. Arkansas, you can have Pomot. Conveniently, groundhogs do live in your state, but that's not the only reason. No, when naming your state, you thought it'd be a good idea to copy someone else's name like copying homework. You changed it just a little, slapped on some extra letters, and forgot to pronounce one, and called it a day. Like Pomo to Palmot, what do you even add? A floof? A bigger national budget deficit? The largest list of child sex offenders? I'm sorry, Palmot fans, just watch out for their grabby hands or you're in for a shock. California, you get a great, big, flamboyant, showboating, Gigantamax Charizard. Oh, you're big and powerful and full of yourself just because if you were a country, you'd have the fifth highest GDP in the world. But look at your biggest industries, California. Hollywood is just rehashing old ideas over and over again like Pokemon's use of Charizard. And the ever worsening droughts are killing off your agriculture. Your future is just not sustainable. And if you look past all the glitter and glamour of your best years and your richest, most popular people, you'll find that these days, most of the actual state is trashed, dirty, stale, and poorly designed. Also always on fire. You know what, Colorado, the meme stirring in me wants to give you Cherubi. But we're well beyond that now. We've matured. So instead, I'm going to give you Burmy. Because not only does it still look like a blunt one naked, but also because it is perfectly fitting. It likes to live in colder environments high up in the trees. And you are the geographically highest state. But also, Burmy and its evolution Wormadam have three forms that perfectly symbolize the three main aspects of your state. The lush and beautiful green forests, the equally beautiful rocky mountains and sand dunes, 
and all of the just trashiest and laziest people who live in your cities, who struggle to drive more than most, probably because their cars have stolen parts so the dudes can get even higher. Connecticut, you are famous for your world-class universities that only rich kids get into to buy their diplomas. But why are you also famous for having extremely high taxes and utility costs, as in more than double the national average? And you're still trying to raise them. Oh, is it to fix you having the most unequal income in the nation? Maybe if you quit giving away corporate tax cuts, that'll work someday, and maybe you could even fix your damn roads. You get Hypno, a golden, greedy, ruffled-necked little goblin that likes to dangle a coin on a string to those below it to trick them into doing its bidding the way you trick the impoverished to stay there. By which I mean, make sure they don't have the money needed to leave. Or the roads needed to leave. This is the northern state for dying rich people to move to. They don't do anything besides consume, so the only real jobs there are the dirty retail stores and dying businesses that need to have workers, otherwise the rich that live there won't be able to get their daily Dunkin' Donuts. As miserable as it is to be impoverished there, you can't have those workers leaving for better opportunities literally anywhere else. So you tax all of the money they have left and make sure they spend three hours a day hypnotized in traffic, unable to even think about moving. Or having any thoughts at all, really, because they can't afford those schools. Dakota. Yes, I'm mixing both North and South Dakota because no one cares. You two get Cascoon and Silcoon. Back in 2019, there was this massive Pokemon popularity poll, and Silcoon was one of only four Pokemon out of all of them to get zero votes. Because nobody cares. North Dakota, you have the smallest tourism and hospitality industries of any state because nobody cares. And South Dakota, you aren't much better. Oh, you have Mount Rushmore? You mean the native Lakota's sacred sixth grandfather's mountain you hired a KKK member to blow up and carve their colonizers' faces into? Wow. Surely all those woke kids will grow up to become your tourists eventually. So which of you gets Silcoon and which one gets Cascoon and will I ever take the tag off of this? Or find that other plush? No, because nobody cares. Della where? Della here. See, it's so tiny and nothing because the state as a whole was an afterthought. Oh, but it's one of the 13 original colonies. Our official state nickname is the first state since we were the first ones to sign the constitution. Yeah, and you're so proud of that fact because that's all you've really got going for you. But for a country or state, that's about as meaningful as typing first in the comments below a YouTube video, or worse, a Facebook post. Yeah, you get Mew, because, yeah, it was added to the game as an afterthought. But also because, sure, at first it was special. In Gen 1, it was the ancestor of all Pokémon, and the only mythical, but now, it's tiny and insignificant amongst the several others, most of whom are better. Plus, you're both careless about the financial state of things, you tiny tax dodger. Florida, what can I even say about you that hasn't been said a million times already? You are so easy to make fun of because there is so much fundamentally wrong with you. Hurricanes, crocodiles, housing crisis, poverty, education, human rights, human decency, Florida mans. Half your state will be underwater in 40 years, leaving only the worst parts of it. It's all just so tiresome. Making fun of you in any capacity really is just like beating a dead horse. So you get Spectrier, the ghost horse with a pretty mane thanks to all the bath salts, who carries around tiny PP alpha males who are horrified at femininity if it is anything but below them. And who think that one day they'll be king and pull the rest of the country down to your level. Which is sea level, where cold and old people go to die with their tiny ankle-biting dogs who clearly already got to your Pokémon. Georgia, what are you even known for besides Southern hospitality, peaches, and racism? I'm sure it gets tiring having those things always talked about whenever you're brought up, so I did a little research, and I found out that you also produce the most boiled peanuts. More than any other state. Many of them combined. Congrats?
like three of these is your daily sodium. <laughs> There is no Peanut Pokemon yet though, so you still get Bounsweet or Steeny, the closest Pokemon to a Peach. Plus, their sweat is sweet, like your famous diabetes-causing sweet tea, or your famous diabetics-owned sweat. You can lick it right off of them too, you perverts. Hawaii, or Hawaii, you're welcome. I'm sure you'd love an Alolan Pokemon, like Oricorio or Comfey or something, but no, you get Dottler the space observatory bug that is still positively fitting, admittedly, given your own advancements in space research, but like damage from volcanoes, space science is expensive, and you may be a beautiful state, but you're pricing your own incredibly nervous people out of their homes and into makeshift portable houses constructed out of cardboard boxes and tents, more so than any other state. And you are so far removed from everything relevant, you might as well be in space. You're ten time zones removed from the rest of us, so you need those massive telescopes just to see what's going on in your country. You're like that weird, shy, distant relative who only comes out of his little hidey hole to show up during big family reunions, or lists that rank every state in something. Idaho gets the Dunsparce. No, not Dunsparce. Dudunsparce. It's new. But they get it because not only is their population spread out and sparse, but they also have the worst education in the nation. Spending the least budget per student obviously leads to potatoes for brains. But you just know that they are so stupid that they think they're smart, and don't need no education. I mean, they are smart enough to think that they can just vote to be bigger and take land from Eastern Oregon, and that that will somehow help them to care even less about women or something? It wouldn't solve any of their problems. In fact, if this greater Idaho plan of theirs went through, it would only make Idaho on average dumber and Oregon smarter and richer, since they wouldn't have to support that half of themselves anymore. This idea really is just Idaho expanding and repeating its problems, just like the Dunsparce. Illinois has Chicago, and thus also Chicago-style pizza, and that is a better insult than I could possibly write about the state. But them claiming sauce on top and crust a mile high is good aren't their only hollow words. You probably heard them say things like, Welcome to Chicago, the Windy City! There's so much wind here you'll hate it, but we're so tough we can handle it. But Chicago? Your average wind speed is only 10.1 miles per hour. You don't even break into the top 10 windiest cities in the US. And if we're going by entire states, Illinois is only the 16th windiest. You just happen to have a major city in a moderately windy area and based your whole personality on it. Illinois, if you want to talk about real bad things you're toughing out, well, I'm going to give you Shedinja. Not just because you're a husk of your former self, but because it's a hollow ghost bug filled with empty promises. Chicago will be good to you! You'll love living here! Lies. And you keep promising that reducing your rail regulations will somehow solve your railroad accidents, yet they keep getting worse every year, and yours were already the worst. And let's talk about your little insect problem, yeah? West Nile and Lyme disease capital of the United States? Most bug-related death and illness? Maybe if you shot them as much as you shoot each other, you'd have solved that by now. Whoa! Indiana with the upset! I expected Florida to have this one. Big congratulations to Indiana for having the most meth. It's a shame you can't really use it as a pesticide for those pesky cicadas. But it's not just bugs polluting the air, it's also corn. And also all of the coal plants which power your state more than any other. Here are some quotes from the fans of Indiana. Despite the already cancerous coal-filled air quality, we love bonfires and mislabeling every soda as Coke. It's 56 degrees, so I like shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. I am an interesting person. Did somebody say Amish? <laughs> no, it's meth in my ear. I would relinquish my firstborn son to the Colts for some reason. They are an entirely average football team, but we are rabidly obsessed with them because there is literally nothing else to look forward to here. Besides the meth. Indiana, you get primate. Its fur resembles your entire boring landscape, and it would be rabidly obsessed and violent about football, despite not actually being any good at it. And plus, if any Pokémon is on meth... So I just noticed that Iowa is right next to Illinois and Indiana. Why are the top three I states clumped together? Is it because I is a very narrow letter and so they can be squished together easily? 
No, that's dumb. Iowa, your people know that the only difference between a good meal and a good time is where you put the corn. You get Sunkern, because it's the closest thing to a corn Pokémon that everyone just sort of wants to forget about as soon as they learn it exists. Now, I could roast you by just saying you're a flyover nothing but corn state, but you actually own that. Your official state nickname is the Corn State. But conveniently, Sunkern also fits your stereotypes. It's small and insignificant, like your citizens, supposedly. It's overly friendly and smiley to the point of being annoying, like your citizens, supposedly. It's also book smart. Well, your citizens are, anyway. To the point of annoying. Most of your neighbor states make fun of you for not having any major sports teams because you work out at the library. Now, some might also point out that actually Iowa is also neighbors with Dakota and they also don't have a sports team. But again, nobody cares. Kansas, I would give you Tornadus because of your famously large tornadoes, but that would be too much of a compliment, because while Tornadus is ugly and often hated upon, at least it has something interesting about its design. But you, Kansas, were depicted as black and white in The Wizard of Oz because that's actually what you look like. You are a monotone rectangle that got distracted while drawing one of its corners because something noteworthy was happening literally anywhere else. Kansas, you are flatter than the curvature of the Earth, so you get Diglett. Specifically, a currently underground Diglett. You get a small pile of dirt is what I'm saying. You can turn it into a tourist trap. Kentucky has a horse race sometimes, but the rest of the year they only have fried chicken. At least you hope it's chicken, because Kentucky has the worst animal conservation and animal rights protections in the nation. Likely the most actual animal abuse, too, we just don't know because they don't really have much of a system for reporting it. I'm going to give you Machoke, because it has visible wounds on its arms from, you know, working too much, like the slaves you still so desperately want, and because Machoke is just humanoid enough that it has a chance to survive. Louisiana, your parties get pretty crazy. I could give you Meowskareta for that alone, but instead you get Weezing, because you pump more harmful chemicals and pollutants into your land, sea, and air than any other state. Which is also why you have the second highest cancer rate. You grow teratoma tumors and cysts like that second coughing head on the side of Weezing, making it all lopsided. Like you, Louisiana, you're lopsided. And as a bonus, coughing and wheezing are mostly used by criminals, and you have the second worst incarceration rate, stuffing those prisoners into the private prisons you invented, which isn't surprising given that it was folks like you who made damn sure that the 13th Amendment kept prisoners as an exemption to the whole no slaves thing. Maine, at its best, is America's leggy sticking out real far, and that's about the only fun thing it has going for it. I always think it's a big peninsula because my American education system failed me, but no, it's smack dab between two parts of Canada. And thanks to that location, and the weather, and the wildlife, and the nature, and the produce, and the people, and the problems, it's also practically Canada. Which would be a compliment, but we're talking about Eastern Canada. We. Oui. So we gotta give it a mon from the worst Pokémon region, Pokémon France, Kalos. I could legitimately give it Clauncher as a compliment because it's a lobster, what Maine is most famous for. Plus it's got its leggy out real far too. But I think Binacle works a lot better because it's ugly, increases drag upon the country, and has its leggies out real far. And plus it evolves into something that looks like it's straight out of a horror novel. The joke here is that Stephen King is from Maine, and most of his books take place there. <clears throat> uh. Maryland, what the f*** is wrong with you? What is this shape? What are these borders? Are these pity borders? Did the other 12 original colonies bully you into accepting this oblong freak of a shape? Did you get last biddings? Sloppy 13th? You didn't even get to keep the end of this one peninsula. You just let Virginia out of all of the states circumcise you like that. Is something just wrong with you? Oh, I just looked at your state flag. There is definitely something wrong with you. You get Vanillux, because it too is a messed up double blob that always finishes last. 
hence all the white mess. And nobody really likes it, except for the few weirdos who get really into defending that atrocious flag for some reason. Oh, and it gets worse. Did you know that Maryland has one of the highest concentrations of self-identified hardcore gamers and gaming communities per capita? Oh, I can commend you for one thing though, Maryland. The fewest sex offenders per capita. That's really good. And I guess just like Vanillex's design, being in Maryland is a huge turnoff. Boston, you get servine. I mean, I mean Massachusetts, you get servine. Because listen to this. Servine! 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 How can servine be so full of itself or think it's so high and great when it sounds like that? Servine! Ah. Why is the Boston accent what it is? It can't just be because you're so pompous and nose up about your good schools and healthcare, no can it? No, no, it can't be. It must be because you're doing everything you can to make sure that you can't see that Boston was rated one of the worst major American cities to visit. Or is your nose just that stuck up because Massachusetts is one of the worst states for people with allergies? What a problem to have. Bonus fact, Massachusetts was the first state to ban happy hour because it's so much holier than thou that it came to the conclusion that if it's not happy, no one should be. Michigan, I honestly could give you wheezing too. You put more waste into landfills per capita than any other state. You even like it so much you import it. But I mean, the lakes are nice and they do a decent job cleaning the air a bit. However, they give you a weird shape. Why do you have this extra add-on just sticking up out there? Just sell it to another state or Canada already. We know you need the money to fix yourself. Generally. You know what? I am still going to give you wheezing, but Galarian wheezing. Because you are still very, very polluted. Just not actively polluting as much because your days of producing anything worthwhile are long since past. A remnant of the Industrial Revolution, really like Galarian Weezing, who both poisons and purifies. Minnesota. Honestly, there's not much I can say against you other than being a cold and boring flyover state. So I'm going to give you Baxcalibur, a cold and boring, simply designed Pokemon that's just a reference to Godzilla the same way you're just sort of a reference to Central Canada without the healthcare. What with your trees and your ice and your bad accents and stereotypical kindness? Like what's even bad about you? Oh, some of the worst costing homeowners insurance. Wow, boring. The second worst Northern state for people of color to live? Surprising. I guess the boring light monotone Baxcalibur works with that too. It gives them all the cold shoulder. And plus, I mean, you are the coldest state in the lower 48, which might have something to do with your citizens having the highest life expectancy. It's like putting food in the freezer to preserve it. But also, like Baxcalibur, it's boring and doesn't do anything besides exist, thus also having the fewest accidental deaths. Am I S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I? Oh my god, I had no idea how bad it was there. Number one in poverty, and lynchings, and infant mortality? No wonder it's the birthplace of the blues, everyone is sad, and nobody can help because you can't even tell when someone is crying because the humidity is so high. The one and only good thing to say about you is that you have the lowest cost of living but it's only so low because nobody would live there otherwise. You are consistently tied with Alabama for the worst state to live in, but I would argue you're worse, because everybody has to remind you how your state is spelled every single freaking day. Oh right, you need a Pokemon. Uh, Feebas. Because it's wet, depressed, and ugly. There is potential for beauty in there with your swamps, uh, I guess, but you're consistently destroying them in spite of your frequent floods because climate change and groundwater are communist myths. Surely this is an intelligent move that you won't be regretting anytime soon. Now Missouri gets ditto for many reasons. The first is that the state is doing very little to regulate its puppy mills and dog breeding, which it does a lot despite being ranked the worst and most inhumane at it for over a decade now. 
Secondly, they just sort of mimic all of the traits of all of the states around them instead of having any real personality. And thirdly, because Missouri really gets around with its neighboring states, as it shares its two major cities with other states. It's like it's being spit-roasted. And neither city truly belongs to it once you get right down to it, huh? It's like each of them are doing everything they can to not be there. One of them is Kansas City, named after Kansas, and even St. Louis may be named after Illinois if you read it like you were from Idaho. Illinois. St. Louis. Same thing. So now, take those two cities out of the picture, and what are you left with? A mind-brokenly overbred ditto. Just misery. Now Montana, I think you get the depressed and lonely, weapon-carrying Cubone partly because your people are so lonely and scared. I mean, you are so sparsely populated that I wonder how it's even possible you have the most driving fatalities per year. Like, most guns per capita? By a long shot? That makes sense for you. There might be a mountain lion or minority in the county, but that many fatal car accidents? What, do you never get to practice real driving like around other drivers? Do you not use chains in the snow because you think you're tough and safe with all your guns? Do you not use headlights because light symbolizes enlightenment? Or are you all just distracted drivers, lost in your own lonely thoughts? Look, just for safety's sake, take some advice from your internet speed and become dramatically slower than the rest of the nation. Nebraska gets pidgey, because it is the definition of a flyover state. The only time anyone relevant is there, it's because they are in the air flying over it. Nebraska would even fly over itself if it could, and Nebraska knows this, so they keep their buildings short to not get in the way of any airplanes or do anything interesting with their architecture. Their biggest exports are, you guessed it, corn, soy, and beef. And the nature all around their cities? Well, it isn't gorgeous, but it's by no means an ugly wasteland. And statistically, in nearly every single category, in nearly every list of states that rank them in anything, Nebraska almost always finds itself around the middle of all of the states because they are just that boring and average. The only thing interesting they ever had going for them is that they used to have a water polo team, but then all of the horses drowned. That was made up because they don't actually have anything interesting about them. Like Pidgey. Nevada, you are so easy to just pick a Pokemon for and it work. Sandslash, Cacnea, Hippowdon, Sandaconda, you are 95% desert. And I just thought up a quick fun little game. Quickly, as fast as possible, say something about Nevada that has nothing to do with deserts or Las Vegas. Uh -uh, time's up. You probably said Reno, but that's just Las Vegas without the commitment. But even then, Vegas, by which I mean Nevada, has barely any. They have the highest divorce rate. People just tossing their partners and kids into the wind like a Reggie Rock, tossing its dry desert stones into the distance. Its bright and flashy eyelights being the only thing that makes it special amongst all of the other Pokemon who are literally just rocks. Yes, I'm saying you get Reggie Rock. Good job, Nevada. It's the worst Reggie. And so we enter the part of the list where several states begin with the word new, like that terrible Mario Bros. series. It's only new for a short while, no one's going to think this is a new Mario game 20 years later. Or 200. New Hampshire? What are you even famous for that your neighboring states aren't? I spent over an hour looking into you and, oh, you've got nature and pretty trees, a vibrant downtown capital, cozy small cities, trees but orange this time, a mountain, maple syrup, lobsters, craft beer, and all of your neighbors do exactly the same thing, even the same problems. Terrible weather, crummy roads, expensive utilities, and high taxes on those less fortunate because you're really just a red state pretending to be a blue state? You know, dogs are colorblind, so let's give you... Hurtier. The middlest dog-like dog Pokémon with a semi-European vibe. Like, this is literally just my grandma's dog. 
Yes, it's nice and overrated, even though it's not even rated that highly, but there's just not a single thing about it that makes it special. Like, the only thing you can say about both Herd Ear and New Hampshire is that at least it's not New Jersey. But is there even an insult that New Jersey hasn't heard before? I know they get a lot of hate from their superiors in New York, but is the hate really founded on a national perspective? Yes. It might be an easy choice, but somebody had to get it. You get Garboder, the living, overstuffed, bursting garbage bag. New Jersey is the state with the highest population density overall, but even on an individual level, their people are the densest and trashiest. On a per capita basis, New Jerseyites produce five and a half pounds of trash per person per day, more than twice the daily output of most industrialized countries. And that's not even including recycling. They have so much trash there that it is quantitatively, not valuably obviously, one of their biggest exports and they only export two-fifths of what they produce. Sometimes stereotypes are true, it turns out. Also, your infrastructure is trash, so I'm going to go ahead and upgrade you to Gigantamax Garboder. Its expanding, overwhelming girth is also pushing your people out of your state faster than any other as it continues to expand. New Mexico, how can I give you an insulting Pokémon and it not seem racist? I guess I'll just do my best to not give you Ludicolo, but that's fine because Ludicolo is too busy having a good time so it doesn't really fit. Because you are just a terrible combination of things, New Mexico. Hot, dry, and miserable. Among the poorest and most obese, you are the most radioactive. And you have the highest rate of kidnapping by far, but also the highest rate of burglarizing. And also your name is just hilariously insulting. The rest of the states with new in the name are named after the hometowns or home regions of the European settlers who came here. Those cities are a whole ocean away, and this was at the time, quote unquote, new land that they were naming after their old homes. But New Mexico, Mexico is right there. It's like naming your first child Juan and your second child Better Juan. But actually, no, that is a common misconception. Your naming history is significantly more interesting than that because you were named New Mexico or Nuevo Mexico for 200 years before Mexico was even a country. So this is where I would tangent off for two and a half pages talking about some really fascinating history before realizing that that's not what this video is about. So I'll skip it. Here you go, New Mexico. You get Wobbuffet. A nervous blob of fat that, thanks to baby Pokémon mechanics, is sometimes missing its kids. And it was improperly named long before its pre-evolution, Why Not Got It Right. See, their original Japanese names are puns that play off of each other, but in English... Yeah, you get Wobbuffet. Because why not? New York, you have an entire Pokémon region based on the only part of you that matters, and yet I'm compelled to not give you a Pokémon from that region because wishy-washy just fits so much better. Let's break it down. You have the biggest, most populated city in the nation, which is also the city with the highest density. You're packed together like sardines in a can, and yet despite how diverse you are, you're practically all still the same when grouped together like that. You have the highest debt per capita because living there is expensive as shit. And that makes it no wonder that individually, your people are so, so sad and angry all the time, and are always exuding toughness by swearing 12 times a second to try to mask that fact while out in public amongst the crowds. But meet up with a New Yorker one-on-one -on -one and you'll find that they're barely scraping by, barely holding it together, because some people have different opinions than them. Like, if you so much as throw a single snide remark at their poor choice of pizza, apparently the only thing they find any enjoyment in, New Yorkers will come out of the woodwork en masse to gang up on you, because you just personally attacked all of their fragile little egos. And if they don't band together and act like the rudest little pieces of crap, people will realize how insignificant they all really are. North Carolina, why did you separate from South Carolina? Well, the history is quick and really interesting. It actually happened long before the United States was a thing. King Charles II sold Carolina to a group of nobles to get out of debt, and the nobles got there and realized the land was huge and really just terrible. So they split it to better manage it. That's it. 
I lied when I said it was interesting. But the Pokemon you get is interesting. It's Dwebble, because it lives under a rock, both literally because you have the highest rate of eviction, and it was the only place left for it to go, and metaphorically because it's ignorant of many things due to you having among the worst education. The poor thing, like your citizens, is even ignorant to you being ranked the worst state to work in by a long shot. So there's no possible way for it to better itself. For a state that was once so concerned about state and individual rights, you sure do have a lot of laws that specifically disallow cities and jurisdictions to govern themselves and raise their own minimum wages above the federals. Or even have one at all. Or even add their own protections to their workers. In fact, you even specifically take protections away from workers, like the right to not be fired on a whim. And you even lack the federally required paid sick and parental leave for certain and workers. But as long as your people continue living under a rock and don't unionize, another thing that you have many laws fighting against, then they'll all be none the wiser. Ohio! That means hello over there in my animes, which is the only time I ever want to hear it. Ohio, you get clang because your total absence of likable qualities has already led you to the butt of many jokes. You're called the Buckeye State because people want to buck their eyes out of their sockets before seeing it out of the airplane window and getting tetanus. You were once a great industrial state, but there's a reason you're the center of the Rust Belt. And it's leaking into your water supply. You have the worst water quality in the nation and the worst concentration of fine particulate air pollution, but that's more so Indiana and the wind's fault, so I'll give you a pass there. But like how gears and industrialization took jobs away from people and horses, by simply existing you are taking jobs away in general, with the worst rate of job creation and loss in the country. Ohio, I've seen your tourism commercials, and I hope you know that they fool no one. Oklahoma, why are you even a state? You get stack attacka, because why is it even a Pokemon? It's a bunch of plain, underwhelming bricks, each individually sentient, living together, pretending to be one singular Ultra Beast. Which is an extra-dimensional alien Pokemon in case you've willingly gone outside at some point and so don't know that. But it's all very fitting for you, Oklahoma, because seriously, half of you is made up of First Nation reservations, and the other half might as well be. One of them is called Iowa, which is funny to me. And I'm sure most of the folks living there feel like aliens in their own home continent. It's sad. Like whoever designed this thing. Oklahoma, the only part you legitimately have to yourself is the panhandle that everyone makes fun of you for, and the only reason that you have that is because Texas gave it to you so that they could keep their state's rights to govern themselves and choose to own slaves. Was that a good deal for you, Oklahoma? And also, would anybody care if Stack Attacka stopped being a Pokemon? Oregon, you get Cherim because you're famously extremely two-faced. And you have a lot of cherry trees, that's true also, but it's mainly because you are famously two-faced. How do these vastly different types of people live together in one state? Your western side has Portland, Eugene, and really just the whole side is just infamously extremely liberal-leaning. Flamboyantly flying LGBTQ2SA plus pride flags that are brighter than your hair and overpriced tattoos, while preaching to the choir with BLM slogans across every building surface so that you can feel good about yourselves. All while decriminalizing several drugs, handing out welfare for days, food and healthcare to the needy, canceling celebrities for saying hey guys because it's not inclusive enough, prioritizing green energy and walk or bike ability, and regularly using more pronouns than Portland has strip clubs and Portland has more strip clubs per capita than even Las Vegas. It's one of the few times Go Woke Go Broke actually has any merit, because my god Portland, your homelessness rate. But then, you cross a single mountain range to the east, and suddenly, the homeless are virtually hunted for sport. And suddenly, there's more confederate flags, schnazzy nazzy wannabe tattoos, and proud boy bases of operation than there are women who've experienced an orgasm. Basically, shut-ins who seclude themselves and only mask up when advocating for war, genocide, or collapsing democracy. They only really live to consume and spread conspiracies, dubious statistics, and science podcasts without any real scientists. All while collecting more guns than IQ points in case someone tries to read a textbook at them. Now, ironically, given the weather on the two sides of Oregon, these two forms should be swapped? 
But sue me, what are you gonna do? Pennsylvania. You have the second worst bridges in the country. You need to have a special jumping air dash ability that you get from a boss and then backtrack all the way to the bridges just to cross them. By which I mean, have money, because you have the second most toll roads and bridges per capita, and the most expensive transportation tickets, despite also having the oldest fleet of outdated, run-down transportation vehicles. And to top that all off, your main city, Philadelphia, has the fourth slowest traffic in the nation. Where is all of that toll money going to? Oh, just greedy privatized pockets that don't do anything useful besides hoard it since they have no incentive to invest in bettering the state. You get Gimme Ghoul, a tiny little guy who nickel and dimes the environment and everyone in it, all just to hoard that wealth in a treasure chest that it rides around in like a car. But enough about your capitalistic roads, even on the government side, you also have the highest gasoline taxes. I mean, cool? Encouraging people to bike or go electric? Maybe? No? You just hate people trying to go places? You even call yourself the Keystone State, like the leading national distributor of auto equipment, Keystone Automotive, which started in your state, so I just... I can't really tell what your goals are here, Pennsylvania. Is this all on purpose? Have you been bribed to allow this to happen, or are you just that obtuse? Also, I've been to Philadelphia and had a world-famous Philly cheesesteak. Can't say I'd want one again. Rhode Island, I'm going to give you Bon Sly, a tiny baby Pokemon that's pretending to be something it's not. It's a sneaky, fake bonsai tree that is actually made of stone. That's why it's Sly. First of all, you're barely a state. Look at you. But mainly, under absolutely no definition, are you an island. You even call yourself the Ocean State, yet you barely even have a coastline. And ironically, despite having rogue misspelled in your name, you actually manage to beat out Pennsylvania here because you are ranked as having the worst average road and bridge quality in the nation, filled with so many holes that nearly half of those bridges are considered beyond repair and in need of immediate replacement. It's like you made them out of terracotta and watered down wood glue, refusing to ever repair them because it's too anxiety inducing. It's no wonder you have the highest rate of depression and cry all the time about it like Bon Sly. Nobody can safely go anywhere and nobody actually wants to visit. South Carolina, I think out of all of the states, you just have the hardest time letting go. So you get slow bro, specifically slow bros latched on shelter that never lets go. First off, you have the hardest time letting go of bad old habits, by which I mean the worst smoking secession rate. And you still even have cigarette vending machines because getting rid of them is somehow communist. But also, you aren't over your loss in the Civil War, so there's more people flying Confederate flags than South Carolinian or American ones combined, unless you count the thin blue line. And going even further back, like that shelter on Slowbro, you can't just let go of the time that North Carolina and South Carolina were one and the same. You really are just a repeat of North Carolina again, and yet you're below them. <laughs> You are ranked the fourth worst state to live in overall, because on top of all of North Carolina's problems that you can't let go of, you add on the problem of having an even worse education system and some of the worst traffic probably due to having the highest at-fault car accident rate. Are your driving schools as bad as your regular ones? Are your drivers all just spacing out thinking about their next nicotine hit? Are they too slow to remember Oh, red means stop before it's too late? Or is it just because of all of the oversized lifted F-150s with more flags on the back than millimeters of the driver's penis? Get a grip on reality, South Carolina. You can't teach Jesus take the wheel instead of stay between the lane lines and don't hit pedestrians. Tennessee, I'm going to give you chandelure because parts of you are pretty and alluring. But don't let the fame and glamour of Nashville distract you from the reality of the rest of Tennessee. It smells like tobacco, whiskey, and dead rodents. The only 10 I see is your scale of untimely death and injury. 
Did you know that factoring in all kinds of danger, natural disasters, crime, accidents, infant and maternal mortality, and exposure to deadly materials, Tennessee is actually the most dangerous state to live in by far? It's like owning a chandelier. Being in their very presence, while nice to look at, slowly drains you of your soul. Exactly what Tennessee does to those who move there in hopes of a better life. You know what they say, everything is bigger in Texas, including high school dropout rates, gerrymandering, and the sheer quantity of registered sex offenders within your borders, which you seem to care an awful lot about Texas, so you get bastioed on. A fossil Pokemon that's just a big, dumb and ugly dinosaur that looks a bit like that creepy old man from Family Guy, your favorite cartoon if he had a giant castle wall for a face. Maybe if you line up enough of them, you can actually secure the border you won't shut up about. But speaking of castles, you sure do seem to put a lot more effort into making sure your people can still lawfully shoot and kill each other for stepping on a single blade of their Kentucky bluegrass lawn that they water more than you water your construction workers, than effort into making sure you're among the unhealthiest citizens, or at the very least, insured even a little bit. Utah! Ha ha! Mormons! Am I right? Original joke time! Watch out! They're gonna get ya! Knock knock! Open up the door, it's me! Beware is the Pokémon for ye, a big friendly huggy bear that's totally trustworthy, but really is just a man in a suit. Can you do me a favor and have a seat right over there in that stool? Huh. As if anyone would turn him in, or actually put him in jail, Utah is the first or second most corrupt state depending on how you measure it. Any bear suit wearing priest, coach, or politician would get out of jail instantly. And we all know the real reason why you call yourself the Beehive State. It's because you want your citizens to be unthinking drones that care not about your corruption, because at least you're all the same religion and that's all the trust you need. Just stay in line. Don't ask questions about your taxes, or the church, or the environment, because we can just pray for more rain, and we will all be just fine. Just keep making that sweet, sweet honey for the bear. Vermont, I thought you were Wisconsin. But God, you're just New Hampshire again. Yet somehow worse. Your snobby, hippie pride can be smelled from Cuba. You think you're so special because you have nice trees, cozy small towns, and a vibrant downtown in your capital, and sometimes those trees are orange. Oh, and you love maple syrup and craft beer. But welcome to the Northeast Club, bitches. You're the same as the other states here. What, you think you're one fancy mass-produced Reduced ice cream factory makes you stand out? You think you're a hipster state because you're the second least populated and that somehow means you're going against the mainstream? You think you're the absolute best at fighting for justice and equality because of pacing some very basic progressive laws and promoting inclusion in a very virtue signaling way despite being the second least diverse state in the nation? Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with little diversity. It is what it is. Your hearts are in the right place. But what's hilarious is that Vermontinians get all defensive whenever that's brought up. Actually, it depends on how you define diverse, because Vermont is very diverse. If you look at the ethnic breakdown, Vermonters are actually composed of 13 different European ethnicities, and you're just a hater who sees oh that as 13 God, different shades of white. Please shut up. <laughs> you have a wider variety of cows than of skin tones. There is no other Pokemon for you besides Furfru, because it's like 13 different shades of the same basic forgettable yet somehow snobby about it white Pokemon. Give or take a few. But speaking of everyone's most favorite topic, racial issues from the perspective of an overweight white guy on the internet, it's time for Virginia. Virginians, your state gets Tyrogue because it is somehow the state most obsessed with losing. Tyrogue is not a very good Pokémon. But yes, Virginia has more Confederate statues, monuments, symbols, battle flags, and Confederacy-themed gift shops than any other state. Many of them combined, even. And look, I understand the wants to preserve history. But one, we all know that the vast majority of these were put up during the Jim Crow and Civil Rights eras to send a message to certain people. And two, it's one thing for a monument to say, and here a battle was fought between two opposing sides and their deaths are still felt echoing through to today, versus 
This is our Confederate hero, General White is right, who led the charge against the oppressive Union who wanted to strip away our beautiful and gracious state's rights to do nothing in particular with. Next, please visit our Confederate gift shop featuring Come and Take It bumper stickers and the Confederate battle flag with a bass on it to symbolize that the South will rise again. Like you guys know, they lost, right? And this isn't even the actual flag of the actual Confederacy, it's just their barely even used battle flag. The battles being specifically the things they mostly lost. In Virginia, you're like barely even the South. You wanna roleplay as losers? That's sorta of Tyrogue's whole deal. It has Pokedex entries that say things like, to make itself stronger, it keeps on fighting even if it loses. Is that what January 6th was about? Washington, I'm gonna give you Lipard, because it turns out your people are very catty. And also because everything I thought I knew about you was a lie. Being so close, I've heard so many things about you or things that your people say about you that even just the tiniest bit of research debunks. Oh, the weather is so wet and there's so much rainfall. You're not even in the top 10 rainiest states. Now that most of Silicon Valley has moved here, we are the richest state per capita. No, that's Connecticut. And again, you're not even in the top 10. But maybe you're right. Maybe those tech giants' riches will trickle down someday. Well, we're like the most progressive state. I mean, the greater Seattle area is one of the most progressive cities, but the state as a whole, again, not even in the top 10. We're the evergreen state, not for much longer. We're the most northwestern state, if you don't count Alaska. Our volcanoes are the most dangerous and destructive. Look at Mount St. Helens! You had one major eruption over 40 years ago. And what is Alaska, California, and Hawaii? Oh, it's so wonderful here. We have so much fresh water, so many lakes, ponds, and rivers. Some say we're the land of 10,000 lakes. Washington, that is literally Minnesota's official nickname. And did you forget about Michigan? Again, you're not even in the top 10 for freshwater area. Like, come on, Washington. You can't even give yourself an original name. You're just named after a president, and Washington, D.C. already existed, too. What are you trying to prove with your lies? Uh, well, we produce the most lumber of any state. And we're where Starbucks and Amazon started. And yet you had the nerve to brag about being progressive? Oh no. West Virginia, I am so sorry you have to exist the way that you do. You've got one good song written by a guy who had never been there, and that's the only good thing you have going for you. You get colossal. For multiple reasons. Yes, you produce the second most coal and are the second most coal powered, but if you replace the coal being shoveled into the furnace with money, that is essentially what you are to the nation. A burnt out, dumb and hungry money furnace that breaks things and wouldn't exist without the constant feeding of federal aid. You have the fewest college graduates, the fewest full-time workers, and are among the most impoverished. You have the slowest internet and the most broken down infrastructure in the country. And like old big bellied consuming colossal, are number one in obesity, which also ties into being number one in most unhealthy diets and number one in diabetes. You're also number one in the most drug overdose deaths, number one smoking rate, and are among the lowest in life expectancy. Like what are you even doing with all of that federal money? Besides burning it for warmth. Oh, Wisconsin, what are you if not the cheese state? I doubt there's any Pokemon that fits you better than Miltank. However, I'll have you know that the TV doesn't lie, and it told me that happy cows come from California. So you can take your depressed PTSD cows and have them roll out to the West Coast to maybe, finally, make something worthwhile besides novelty cheese products. So let's drag your most standout problems into the open, Wisconsin. You get Parasect, because, like you, it's a parasitic mushroom that's arrested the body of a now brainless cicada. Wisconsin, you're one of the worst states when it comes to gerrymandering. The less popular party still gets two-thirds of the state assembly seats, and you're so sneaky about it because visually your districts don't look that bad. But those districts are so meticulously spread the way that they are so that nobody could really notice this like mold. 
slowly but surely revealing itself on your cheap cheese of an election. And Wisconsin, you do also have one of the worst problems with substance abuse in general, like the umbrella or mushroom top term of substance abuse. Just a really bad problem with drug and alcohol overconsumption. But like the mushrooms taking over or arresting the poor parasect, you also have the biggest racial disparity between arrests for the same crimes. We're talking Whitey gets caught with an illegal drug, a fine, a warning, and a small chance of arrest, but Blackie? 11 times more likely to be imprisoned for it. More than double the national average of racial disparity in incarceration. That's surprising, coming from you, Wisconsin. You're so north. But I guess all cops are Bree. And lastly, it's Wyoming. The last in many things, really. The last alphabetically. The last bastion of boring American Old West culture. Last in population density of the lower 48. And least population. The least amount of debt? That's nice for you, Wyoming. But also, you have the least amount of people who don't want to unalive themselves because they live in Wyoming. It's the fastest way out, after all. Look, your branding says you should get Boofalant or Rapidash because we all know how much you love your bison and cowboys. They're on your state flag, the seal, the IDs, the welcome sign, the license plates. But I'm going to give you Bramblin, the ghost who's trapped inside of a tumbleweed and who, despite being a brand new, current-gen Pokémon, most Pokémon players have already forgotten about it. But at least it's still fitting for you. Its boring design matches your boring desolate plains, which are boringly only populated by invasive tumbleweeds and boring people who still highly value the Wild West culture. The most boring culture. And also because like a tumbleweed blowing through a ghost town in a cliche western movie, most folks in the area are just moving through it. Your entire state is populated like the heads of your people, and like a ghost town itself. It's sparse vacant, and the only sounds are from the wind, the bison, and the ghostly moans of your self-departed previous citizens. Maybe as a Bramblin, they'll finally get out. Now that sure was fun, wasn't it? I'm sure I won't regret bringing politics into this. What did your state get, and do you think my take is accurate? I'll have you know that I only really meant defense to just a few states. I've also thrown together this map featuring the states with their most insulting Pokémon attached. Link below to the full resolution image. And please be nice to me in the comments, because I can dish it, but I cannot take it. I'm like a New Yorker. <laughs>